In this video, I'm going to show you how we integrate um, to infinity. So these are both examples of improper integrals because infinity is one of the limits of the integral. So the first one I'm going to show you is 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. The first thing that we do is that because we can't evaluate at infinity, what I'm instead going to do is going to replace that with a letter, so I'm going to replace it with a, and say that we're going to take the limit as a tends to infinity of 1 to a of 1 over x squared dx. Okay, so instead of evaluating from 1 to infinity, I'm going to evaluate from 1 to a and let a to in, tend to infinity. This is the process that we go through. Now, 1 over x squared as it is, uh, I'm not going to integrate it that way. I want to write it as x to the something. So this is x to the minus 2. So now I can say, well, this is the limit as a tends to infinity. That limit should still be there. Of add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1 evaluated between 1 and a. So this is the limit as a tends to infinity of a to the minus 1 over minus 1 take away 1 to the minus 1 over minus 1. Okay, you substitute in a first, then take away, substituting in 1. Right, so let's tidy this up. We've got a to the minus 1 over minus 1. So that's minus 1 over a. That's what that refers to. And minus a minus, that becomes a plus. So plus 1. So what we have here is that if a tends to infinity, then 1 over a will get smaller and smaller and smaller. If the denominator gets larger and larger, so one half, one third, one tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth, one millionth, one billionth, the fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where this will become effectively zero. And you're just going to get left with one. So as a tends to infinity, 1 over a tends to 0, and so this limit tends to just the 1. So that means that the integral between 1 and infinity of 1 over x squared dx is just 1. It's not infinity, although you're integrating over an infinite length, the value is actually just 1. So it's a, quite a difficult concept to get your head around as to why an area which appears to be infinite can be equal to 1. Um, but the, probably the easiest way of visualising it is that if I was saying adding 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus a thirty-second plus a sixty-four plus a two hundred fifty-sixth, for example, and I did this uh, pictorially, so let's say that this square represents 1, and here is 2. So here's 1, plus a half, plus a quarter, plus an eighth, plus a sixteenth, plus a thirty-second, plus a sixty-fourth, plus a two-hundred-fifty-sixth, plus a five-hundred-twelfth, etc., I keep on adding a smaller and smaller and smaller fraction, and there's an infinite number of fractions that I'm adding together, but the overall total would be equal to 2. Okay? It would get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 2 the more fractions I add, but never quite reach it. Okay? But overall value would be 2. So that is how an infinite number of things added together can just be equal to a finite number, which seems counterintuitive, but does work. So let's see what happens 
when I now deal with 1 to infinity of x squared dx. So I would do it in the same way. This time I'll use the letter b. So I'm going to take the limit as b tends to infinity of the integral of 1 to b of x squared dx. So the limit as b tends to infinity, let's evaluate this. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. I'm going to evaluate it between 1 and b. So this is the limit as b tends to infinity of b cubed over 3 take away 1 cubed over 3. So this is the limit as b tends to infinity of b cubed over 3 take away, well that's just 1 third. Now as b tends to infinity, b cubed will also tend to infinity. So as b gets larger and larger and larger, this gets larger and larger and larger and has no bound. And so because it has no bound, we would say that this diverges. The integral diverges. So as b tends to infinity, b cubed also tends to infinity. And so this has no value. So pictorially, x squared between 1 and infinity, there's 1. So we're actually looking at this area, which you can see just gets larger and larger and larger as x tends to infinity. So you can have integrals to infinity that converge okay, at a particular value, or they can diverge. Okay, and this is the first type of improper integral.